What's up, guys? My name is John Mesa, and welcome back to another episode of the Honest Tattooer Podcast. And I'm with Matt Triano, my co host, hey, always. Hey, how you doing? And our special guest. What's up, man? How's it going? Jordan Campbell in the building. Thanks, man. You gotta do it loud like that. <laughs> yeah. I like it now that I can hold it up. It's better. Thanks for having me. No, thanks Appreciate for coming it. out, man. Yeah. So, for the people that don't know you, let them know uh, where you're from, how long you've been tattooing, what kind of tattoos you like to do, and uh, how they can find you. Sure. Uh, so, Jordan Campbell, I'm from a city called St. Catharines. It's in uh, Ontario, Canada, about 20 minutes from Niagara Falls, about 45 minutes to an hour from Toronto. Uh, I mostly do black and gray realism. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Jordan Campbell Art. Cool. How long have you been tattooing? Uh, since 2012. Cool. So 12, 13 years, mm-hmm. I think. I'm that math adds up. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I was going to say I'm not <laughs> as bad. That's, yeah, that's, so that's the timing. See. Damn, that's crazy. I'm like, it's crazy that like already 20, if you started tattooing in 2012, it's already like. It's 12 yeah. years. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it doesn't feel that long. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. It moves fast. Um, how'd you get into tattooing? Uh, it's not something that was really on my radar until uh, I was like 29. Okay. So uh, I was always good at drawing in school and stuff like that. But after high school, I just kind of dropped off. I didn't draw at all. Um, then I was working a city job doing security and bylaw stuff and just got tired of it. So trying to find something else to do. And uh, I was planning on getting tattooed and uh, drawing designs for my tattoo that I wanted to get. So then yeah. I was like, hey, it seems like guys are making a pretty decent living out of this. It'll be a cool job. Maybe I should try to see how I can do it. So, Did you should... get your design tattooed on you? No. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I reached out to the guy that, that I had I only had one tattoo at the time. It was just some script across my chest. So I just reached out to him. I was like, how do you get into this? And he was like, you got to get an apprenticeship. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, can I get an apprenticeship? He's like, no, I'm not looking for that. So he had a a private studio at the time. So he wasn't, uh, it wouldn't have worked out just because he was in the city. It would have been like too long of a commute. But uh, yeah, no, he gave me the steps to basically put together a portfolio and then, uh, I just went shop to shop until I found someone that was willing to teach me. So you started pretty late. You yeah, said you I was were 29, yeah, 29. Yeah. So, which How, was probably a good thing, but. I feel know, like when you start tattooing, maybe a little bit later, you are, you're going to approach it in a very different way. Yeah. And, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was. I ain't yeah. got time to waste. I need to do this. <laughs> exactly. I have a life. Exactly. I need to yeah. get the fucking work. Yeah. If I did it. Now, if I started when I was younger, I probably would have more experience, but I might have just fucked around and not taken it as seriously. Oh, for sure. When yeah. I was that young, right? So Yes. Uh, at 29, did you? I developed some bad habits. Um, <laughs> at 29, yeah, I was married. So like, That's what I asked you. Were I was you like, married? I have to make this work yeah. as a job. So especially once I finished my apprenticeship and then like another guy at the shop, he got let go. And so the, the owner of the shop called me. He's like, hey, there's a full-time spot. It's yours if you want it. So my wife was super supportive and she's like, yeah, you're miserable at your job. She's like, just do it. That's awesome. So, yeah. The way so, I got promoted was th- it was me, the owner and one other artist at the shop that I was apprenticing at yeah. in the middle of the night, the one other artist is packed as shit and left. So the next day <laughs> the owner was like, all right, well, I guess you're a tattooer now because we need, <laughs> you need someone to tattoo. He needs a way to do this work. <laughs> it was pretty similar to that for me. He didn't pack his shit and leave. Um, he had, taking money from the till to pay his dealer. Oh. And then so the owner found out. So he's like, he, the owner packed his shit and then called him and was like, yeah. see you later. Yeah. So, um, but they've made amends since. And yeah, the guy that got kicked out, he's a good guy. He just, just needed to pay some people. And a bad time of his life. And yeah, he's, he's clean, sober now. So right he's on. doing well. Not tattooing, but he's doing other things. So, Shit. Yeah, he's a good guy still. Well, talking about that kind of situation <laughs> of somebody who was, oh man, he was my friend. I needed to give him a shot. So uh, a tattooer showed me today a video of this guy. And it, this is all recorded, but, you know, uh, either the friend of the person getting tattooed. So this is in Las Vegas. And this guy at the shop is like, 
under the influence of who knows what <laughs> multiple things probably and um the guy does a terrible tattoo on this person like terrible tattoo and not only does he do a terrible tattoo he does like just terrible experience like the guy's just like out of it just being like completely zoomed out like just on everything and then uh the lady now is like went back to the place and she is suing now the the tattoo shop shit so did you watch this video I haven't watched it in entirety yet. I started watching it, but I read a little bit about it. I've got questions and maybe there's some answers in the video, but how long of a session was this tattoo? It looked like it was, it looked like it wasn't a short one for sure. It was like, it's a pretty big tattoo. So why would the woman just continue to sit there getting tattooed by this guy who's clearly out of it? I don't know, man. That's one of those things where like I've seen, I mean, I've yeah. seen situations like that where I've been in the shop and somebody's doing a shitty tattoo and you're just like, dude, run for the fucking rails, <laughs> yeah. run. I think run. though too, like to her credit, like you're in so deep and like, it's probably really uncomfortable to be like, hey, like, this is I not uh, stop. looking like what I thought. Right. And she's in a tattoo shop, which might be intimidating to begin with for her. Yeah, to, like, so to be like, I don't want to do this. And like, she might have been afraid of the confrontation that that might have resulted from that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that. Yeah. That's uh, that's scary. It is scary. <laughs> yeah. Now let's roll the tape, guys, because I feel like now that's enough to know that we should watch this. So let's roll this and talk about it afterwards. So let's see. A Las Vegas tourist hoped for a lifelong memory with her son, but it turned out to be a painful memory instead. A News Now investigator Vanessa Murphy has this story you're seeing right here first. You think coming to Vegas, there's, there's supposed to be some of the best tattoo artists in the world. I'm still just in shock. Shock after this is what she left with. I just sat there and cried for a few hours. She asked us to protect her identity using only her first name, Melissa. She says she was visiting from British Columbia, Canada on April 1st when she took her son to get a birthday tattoo at Illuminati Tattoo just off the Las Vegas Strip. She said they did their research and checked reviews. They were all amazing results. While her son's tattoo was a success, her experience took a turn. She says she froze and noticed the artist appeared to be struggling. He was sweating profusely. His eyes were dilated. He was slurring his words. I can only imagine that he was on drugs, but I don't know for sure. I barely it. She also claims at times he used no ink, a dry needle, and removed his gloves. This is the end result. I was very, very upset. Here, she says he tries offering an explanation. You're not happy tomorrow when I like, explain to you and I tattoo it? I'll just give you your money back. I was totally um, just in shock. Uh, he didn't clean the tattoo area. He didn't wrap it. He didn't tell me what to do for aftercare. I mean, I feel like these news people don't know anything about tattooing. They have no, no, no idea what they're talking about. So I feel like they're kind of making it worse than it is to a certain degree. <laughs> uh, it's pretty bad. But it is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not saying it's not bad. I would bad. say that is pretty bad. <laughs> um, I mean, if the owner's willing to pay for the removal... I'm going to say That's this. It's like the rights. The I think the I main the right thing, direction, at least. The, the main <laughs> thing, I think it's like, I think where you were going with this, like, for example, just because a tattooer has a body art card, whatever that yeah, may that be, doesn't mean a license, shit. it doesn't mean shit. They could have still done that shitty tattoo. Like, I don't even yeah. know what that even is. Even with because that shitty license, you know, even if you have a license, it doesn't mean that you're going to yeah. do a good tattoo. And for I, example, in New York City, you need to get a license before you can even touch a tattoo machine. Okay. Technically. In, in Ontario, there's no tattoo licenses. Yeah. There's nothing. So, you, there's nothing. You a body art card could be just a sticker. You, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you don't even have to you have go. like bloodborne pathogen. You don't have to have like first aid CPR. You're still in like, the wild, wild west right there. That's, it's just yeah. the health board comes and inspects the shop. And as long as they say it's cool. Oh, it's clean. There but even good. then the, the health board like can't really do anything. They just like say we're going to write you up on our website and then what happens there's nothing <laughs> and then that's it as far as i know nothing. Yeah. yeah i think they can like they can give you a fine eventually if it goes far enough yeah but, but man 
that tat- that, that tattoo, tattoo was bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was so bad. Yeah. But what was crazy about it is like it it looked like a like a like it should have been like a tramp stamp design, right? I couldn't tell what the From hell the it was. Piece of, well, I looked at the piece of paper that the dude had oh, right yeah, yeah, by yeah, it did the have tattoo. Like a symmetrical look and to it, it looked like a symmetrical kind of tramp stamp design, but it was on the side of the thigh, but then it looked nothing <laughs> yeah. like yeah. what was on the paper. Not even, even know remotely what that was to be. close. Did he do the sun's tattoo? It looked like no, it looked like somebody somebody, somebody else, else did, did it. it. Somebody else yeah. in the shop did it. I mean, it. the sun's tattoo didn't look great either. It, no, it didn't. So they did the research, but really did they? But did they really do the research? <laughs> Man, I mean, I, yeah. I it reminds like, me of um, what Mario was saying. He was like, the shop should be good enough that if anybody gets tattooed by anybody at the shop, they should feel safe. They should feel yeah. safe that it yeah. should be good to go. So you could do research on the shop and be like, oh, yeah, I went to, you know, Jose. Jose yeah. did great. But if you walk in and get tattooed by somebody else, you're kind of rolling the dice. You're kind of rolling the dice. But you know? I mean, yeah. And I feel like even when people say I did my research, I feel like there's a, a fairly large majority of the population that doesn't know what a good tattoo actually looks like. Yeah. Cause I've seen people be like, Oh, look at my tattoo. Isn't it awesome? And I feel I'm like, like yeah. hands down yeah. 99% of the people who could see could tell that that's not a good tattoo. If that was on their website, then yeah. <laughs> It's kind of be. like, you know, like are you saying? Like the, the sun's tattoo didn't look that great, but it also was like, Oh, like, at least, I yeah. Get, I knew what it was. Yeah, it wasn't like, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> it wasn't like, I'm going to sue you bad. I wonder if it's like one of those things where like the hot girl hangs out with all the ugly friends to make her look even better. Like if that tattoo looked okay <laughs> compared to the mom's yeah, tattoo. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, wow, at least yeah. the sun was like, I got a Picasso, baby. Well, at first I thought that was the bad tattoo. Yeah. So and then I saw the other one. I was like, oh no. That was the good time. Wait <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Man, so. that was incredible, dude. Yeah. So I think it's. I feel like the shop owner also could have got ahead of that a little sooner, maybe. I like, think that was the very next day. I think that's what she said, right? It was like the very next day because, like, she contacted the, the artist right away. Yeah. She told him right then and there on the spot before she even wrapped it up that she was unhappy she with was it. She was unhappy with yeah. it. That's what he was saying. Come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. I'll give you your money back. Yeah. It's such I, a weird I don't thing to say. Just give me my money yeah, back like, now. How about you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Come back tomorrow. I'll give you your money if back. He hasn't wrapped it up yet. It's like, why Why does he even have the money already? That's true, he did, too. Yeah, he didn't like, even wrap it up. And like, how about just, why don't you keep Dude, your money? And I'm come gonna back tomorrow. Say, and we'll talk about how we can make this Dude, right. I'm going to say that guy was like, all right, you need to pay me now. Uh, I'm going to put the stencil on. I'm going to let it dry. He went out back. He bought some drugs. He got <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, probably, Dude, right? He probably got fucked up, came back inside. Now I got no money and I'm going to do this tattoo terribly. And afterwards, I'm going to be like, come back tomorrow. Yeah. After I fuck somebody else up and take their money, I'll give them to you. Yeah. Come back tomorrow. I won't be here. <laughs> I'll be gone. Wow, that's dude. unfortunate. <laughs> that's unfortunate. You know, and you know what's the worst about situations like this is that not only is she going to be traumatized, she's going to tell her story. Other people are going to be less trustworthy when they go get a tattoo and anything like that. And you know, it just creates just a bad yeah, domino anybody, effect. Anybody that sees this is just yeah. adding to. I mean, the, the reporters are freaking. Well, be careful. Ask for those body art cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what, yeah, and that's just goes back to like they don't even know what they're talking. They don't about even know what like, they're talking about either. What is a body art card? What is a and body what, art card? What does that prove? Yeah, it proves. That's nothing. not the issue here. This the, the body art card isn't the issue. It's the tattoo artist doing a tattoo when they had no business. Which uh, doing? It. Did you see the? I mean, there's so many scammers and fucking people like this. Like like people were doing. Uh, like fake Instagram pages with like AI tattoos on them and then asking for appointments and deposits for people. And then just, Oh yeah. I get those sometimes. Get out of here. <laughs> that's wild. I haven't heard of that happening, but I'm not surprised that that's happening. Yeah. Cause people are like, wow, look at this guy. He's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to get tattooed by him. I mean, artists all the time are like someone has a fake account. Don't give them any money. I don't ask for money over Instagram. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI is only going to make that worse. If you remember a few weeks back, we had Ed from Tattoo Armor on the podcast, and he was able to hook us up with a discount code for our followers. So Tattoo Armor is literally the best way to wrap your client. I've been using it, Matt's been using it, and it's just awesome. There's no mess, there's no glue, and it's just super comfortable. I hope you can try it for yourself and just go on to Tattoo Armor and use the code Honest Tattooer for 20% off your order. Talking about AI, the new chat GPT model, I've been messing with it talking to it just telling it all about my life so it can <laughs> imitate me better where uh, later when i'm a robot man i'm kind of bummed out that i don't have that yet ah, i tried it yesterday and it was like nah it's, try again later it's pretty incredible it's, that is, you were tattooing when you were talking to it yeah so all you got to do is just start talking to it you start talking to it you don't got to like log in like open up the app or anything um it depends you can have it if once you open up the app and you start the conversation mode you can close your phone and it's always listening mm. and it's just it's just running in the background chat gtp app the chat gpt or app is it like a specific and it's the new version is called version 4.0 yeah and which uh, i have i have 4.0 but those features just aren't working are you sure i, I tried because the first day that i tried it i um I, it wasn't letting me do it, but there were so many people Maybe that's on the was. thing, just kind of like not uh, activating or anything like that. Is there still a wait? I know there was a wait list to get it at one point. Is that still a thing? Well, I don't know. But now it's on. I'll be like, uh, hi, welcome to the Honest Tattooer podcast. <laughs> hi there. Thanks for having me on the Honest Tattooer podcast. What would you like to talk about today? Uh, well, obviously, we want to talk about tattoos. Absolutely. Tattoos are a great topic. What specific aspect of tattooing would you like to dive into? Techniques, well, styles, aftercare, or something else? Well, before we get into all that, you know, I want to introduce you to some people here that are also on the podcast. We have Matt and we have Jordan. What happened there? She's thinking. She's thinking. Earlier today, she was. Sorry, I'm having issues right now. See, Our systems are experiencing heavy load. That's yeah. the problem. Try again later. <laughs> when a lot of people are using it, then <laughs> it'll it'll do that. But I mean, it's a matter of time before heavy loads will do that. This. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're talking about something that might become more popular or widely used over time. Oh yeah. Are you referring to a specific tattoo technique or trend. No, we were just talking amongst ourselves. So we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Got it. No problem. I'm here whenever you need me. Enjoy your conversation. Dude. That was a little attitude at the end. <laughs> yeah, right? Enjoy yeah. your conversation. <laughs> well, you can also even, <laughs> hey, I want you to talk to me with a little bit more attitude and it'll change its tone. Okay. Talk to me nice. She's going to talk to you way nicer. It's pretty wild. Like the way that she converses and everything, and you can change the voices so you can have, you know, a dude, a girl, a girl will lean different, whatever. You can change so much about it, but the, how quick it can. And this is just the first version of it. That's been out for a couple of days. Yeah. Earlier today, when you were talking to it with your client, it was like right away and right away responding yeah like you were having a conversation it's, it's pretty wild it's pretty wild have you tried the video aspect of it yet um i asked it to uh, i asked it hey what kind of hairstyle do i have and it said you have you have long dreadlocks how does it know that it's looking at me and at the same oh. time comparing me to a million images on the internet and saying oh you have long okay. dreadlocks so it's using the video to look watch too. to watch not just listening it's watching it is yes it can watch it can see that's fucking creepy that's what i'm saying <laughs> real quick let's let's like show show one of your tattoos and be like what do you think of this tattoo yeah that's a good idea let's see if it does <laughs> show it a good one and then show it a bad one see if it yeah can tell hey i want to show you some tattoos that are on my arm i want you to tell me if you know what they are <laughs> identify your tattoos you can describe them to me or if you have the ability to share an image that works too what do they look like all right i'll share an image okay so i guess the camera thing's not working yeah it's on i can like put it up let's see <clears throat> Uh, 
Okay, now describe this tattoo. The videos I was watching, it was almost like you were doing a FaceTime with the chatbot. I, I'm i still trying to see how the... It's slow right now. Tear poop it's activate. getting lots of heavy name. loads. <laughs> it's getting heavy loads. <laughs> the loads are too big. Man, that reminds me. There is a reel that I saw today, and it was a bunch of different videos all clipped into one reel. And it was all these girls who just discovered that when a guy takes a dump, his <laughs> balls are hanging in the toilet bowl. Yeah. And they're all like blown, like their minds no, are blown. What? No way. <laughs> yeah. like, like, wait a minute, your balls are just in the toilet? What? It, yeah. oh. Sometimes it's like the log ride where you get splashed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gotta dry your balls off after. You gotta dry your balls, yeah, bro. That's, that's Do we got a charger for Gabe's light? I don't know about Yeah, I remember. For sure. uh, speaking of that, dude, gets look uh, before I go any farther or go find this thing. So I, I took a picture of my arm and I sent it to her. And number one, a green hand holding a book, which is that, right? Because that's what's on frame. It was like a green hand holding a book or card. Uh, there's text and symbols above the green hand. There seems to be some text, possibly symbols and additional designs. So there are fully visible in the image. There are other elements around the main design, including what appears to be a rose and some other intricate patterns and shading. And that's just from it looking at this section of my arm. So I can't see the rest of it, but it knows that it's like there is oh, yeah. roses there and I can't see the rest of the design because you're not moving your arm. Yeah. And it could tell that it, this was a green hand. That's pretty wild, dude. It's pretty wild. Yeah. The technology is getting fat. We've it's going to keep getting better, too. It's going to keep getting better and better. I'm telling you, one of these days, we're going to have our guest, Chad GBT. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah, uh, welcome uh, of ourselves. T1000 from Cyberdyne Industries. <laughs> yeah, straight up. I feel like that's the, that's the way it's going to go, dude, because that's pretty wild. It is very, very accurate. Um, I think a lot of people could benefit from from using it more than they probably are at this point already. Like when either when you need things like to uh, like like instead of you having to sit down and plan your day and be like, hey, I have to do this, yeah. this, and this, and this today. What will be the most efficient way? Can you give me a schedule for the day so I can get all these things done and organized? Yeah. And it's going to give you a perfect schedule. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's going to be like all technology where some people Thanks, figure out how to use it oh, for yeah. like efficiency and like beneficial purposes. And then yeah. a lot of people are going to use it for bullshit. Like people use social media for. I mean, isn't that what everybody's using it for now? <laughs> Everyone's used for bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's just bullshitting. Yeah. They, they can't write that good. They can't talk that good. You know, they can't compose an essay that good. Everyone's using it to literally make themselves sound good. Oh, yeah. shit. Sure, G-Money's in the house. Oh, oh what's up, guys? The welcome, voice of reason. Welcome back to the pod. <laughs> yeah, so it, it just, uh, Chad GPT, I mean, I'm just jumping in, but it just allows everybody to fake the funk. It's just another tool in the mix. Uh, it's yeah. just a smart tool. Yeah, but it's it makes, like getting it makes, a, a it makes computer dumb people look smarter in life when they're just... Yeah. Still, <clears throat> I don't know. Like when you got a tattoo artist, that's like it's like putting it. All right, for my eye on drugs and does a really bad tattoo. Yeah, like hey, tattoo. <laughs> how do I fix this? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it'll tell you get a good lawyer. Get a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Chat GPT, can you be my lawyer? It would probably. Yeah, I probably could do it. It could probably be. It lawyer. could probably be a lawyer. decent lawyer. I'm it's, waiting for the day. Yeah, when somebody goes to court and uses Chat GTP as their lawyer. Oh yeah. That's good. Don't worry about it. Or like you get in trouble with the law, use chat GTP for GPT. Legal advice. Yeah. What what you said. <laughs> <laughs> chat GPT. Um But I mean I use it now more than I do Google at this point. Because okay. it's just a quicker 
way to the answer that I'm looking for. Yeah, because you can just say it. It's like, hey, I need to know X, Y, Z. It's going to give it to me. I don't have to go type it in. Yeah. I don't do any of that stuff, um, which if you look back and add like <clears throat> when like, uh, Elon Musk started talking about why he was creating Neuralink is because like he said pretty much this, where it's like it's really slow to have to access the Internet by using typing everything out and trying to have to find out through like a bunch of web pages and all that stuff you should just know whatever happened to that guy that had that implant i don't know they the, maybe they're still studying that guy i haven't but heard already somebody him. already has him yeah the guy already's connected oh yeah, yeah they in the guy that uh i that heard he's it. just using it like kind of right now is like instead of using a mouse he's using it for stuff like that so he just wherever he looks on the screen it's already doing that because I knew that he, it, yeah, he was like a paraplegic or something yeah, like that. So it was helping him communicate, navigate a computer without having to use his hands. That's crazy good. Hmm. That's nuts. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some good's going to come out of this at least. <laughs> <laughs> but more bad. Yeah. It always does. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, well it's, it's always presented like on the outside, like, hey, look at this yeah. awesome gift to humanity. No I mean, one's ever going <laughs> to abuse this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like anything, man. Like just because some people kill other people with guns, it doesn't mean we should ban them. You know, that's is what I think. Right. Yeah. right. You know, there's yeah. gonna be idiots that do dumb things with them, anyways. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have the right to have one. Yeah. You should well, still have, should have the right to have one. I'm pro that, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna be holding up a cardboard sign saying anti AI, anti robots, <laughs> you know, humans over robots. Watch. <laughs> I'm all about for evolution. I know. <laughs> I know, John. You're gonna take over. You're like, I'm waiting for my implant in the mail. Yeah, I know. You're like, <laughs> the new human firmware update. I want that update. I want to be a better human. Dude, load yeah. me up, bro. Load me up. Load me up. Um, I don't hate. I don't hate. So I, I did have a topic that I wanted to talk about, and this is. Um, I heard this on the Making It podcast. One of the guys, he was talking about how to make your, I guess, your social media presence a little bit better. Yeah. And the the, the story that the moral of the story that he was saying was that he watched a story timeline of another creator making a loft in her house. And it went from like, from beginning to end, from like, let me sketch out this plan to fully building it and decorating it, like all in the stories. Yeah. So he was questioning, he was like, man, you just gave away everything in the stories on your Instagram. And now her plan is to make a YouTube video about this. And so he asked his followers, like if, you see everything in the stories. Are you incentivized to actually go watch the video? Yeah. And then like he was putting it in a way was like, do you care about the process? Do you care about the final image? Like what are you looking for? And everyone was pretty much like, they just want to see process shots. They don't care about glamor shots at all. Yeah. Hmm. So it was making me consider when us as tattooers are showing our work, trying to grow our audience, maybe showing the tattoo at the end of the, your session, just taking a nice glamor shot of it. That's not enough. People don't care about that. That's they want to see. <laughs> that's all we do. <laughs> yeah. they, th but people want to see the process of getting tattooed, yeah. the drawing, putting on the stencil, like the whole thing. That's what they care about. No, they so care about the whole process, the whole like experience of them getting tattooed. But I that's what like people want to watch. Is what they want to watch that for yeah. sure. Yeah, probably. Because uh, when I think of videos <laughs> I watch, it's usually process videos. If I start watching a video and keep watching, it's because it starts as something like, "What's going on here? I don't know what this is." Yeah, and then I want to keep watching to find out yeah. what it is. But if I already know, because you just showed me, that's so that was the thing, thing that he was saying too. Is like if 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 let's say in those Instagram stories, the reveal is there. You saw the final shot. You saw the glamour shot. Do you still want to go back to the YouTube video and watch the whole process of it? And most people said yes, because they don't care that the, they got the spoiler of what the final outcome is. They still want to see how it was done. How it was done. How do you got there? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. I also think that. Come book an appointment. In uh, 
the difference too, I think, like from Instagram and YouTube, I think it's almost like a different audience. Oh yeah, it is. It's yeah. a different audience. Mm-hmm. It's people that like different kind of content. They like more of a like a long form, a little yeah. bit more production. Mm-hmm. They want to watch it a little bit more. Like the storytelling is more in depth on uh, on YouTube than what I think people on Instagram yeah. want to see. Yeah, yeah. But overall, the the <clears throat> the moral of that was that from the poll, the people were saying that they don't care about glamour shots. They don't care about the final outcome. They just want to see the process. The process. Yeah. 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 That, make, that makes sense yeah. because I'm drawn to that as well. Yeah. Like when I'm watching other stuff, that's non tattooing, uh, material on YouTube. <clears throat> I love the process. Yeah, I like seeing same. the breakdowns of stuff like the, the close ups. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. As a tattooer that takes, you have to keep that in mind as you're working. It's a lot of work. It's that a lot of work a lot to of work. do that. Yeah. Because it's a lot as you're, Working, you have to also do the second job of documenting your work yeah. from beginning to end. So or hire you, somebody to have like have the camera rolling all the time, all the yeah. time, and be capturing every step of the way for you as you're working, and so you can keep your workflow natural. John, if not, I, find I wanted it, to ask you a question. Can you imagine yeah. that? Like, think about this right now. How hard people have to <laughs> push to make their presence known on social media platforms. Oh, I know. Uh, putting in the work, you have to adapt this like career where it's like internet career and you're stacking that on top of whatever it is you're trying to push <clears throat> but just imagine a shop full of tattooers and also like I, I almost like envision like a golf caddy guy you know like the guy that's always around you like every freaking artist is gonna have their social media guy like catering to like that sounds so freaking annoying like, yeah. to have it's a bunch not of just people. tattooers though everybody's doing that like, I know but it's every just, industry I know I know but I find it even I think it's just strange like, when I do how fast want, yeah yeah how fast it it's is like, I find like when I do want to do like a video where I'm showing the process and stuff because I'm like oh maybe this will engage more people yeah. <clears throat> I sometimes it's weird for me to be like I feel like I'm inconveniencing my client because they're paying me to do a tattoo. They're not paying me to create this video about how I tattoo and yeah. show the process and stuff like that. So it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, do you mind sitting like another like 20 minutes while I set up this camera and like <laughs> get the right angle? Hey, you know what I did like, the other yeah. day? And it <laughs> actually is one of the most watched reels that I did in a long time. I told the guy I was tattooing, hey, whip out your camera and start filming me tattoo you. And I got like his POV yeah, yeah, of yeah, getting yeah, tattooed. Yeah. That's actually pretty it, brilliant. It, it didn't go viral, but it, 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 did, it, really it well. did really well. All right, yeah. well so yeah. I was gonna answer that question for you. Makes sense. By you putting that amount of effort into documenting your client's tattoo, in their eyes, you gave it even more value. That's a good way of looking. Oh at yeah, it. yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, like, I get exactly you know, what you're like saying. the 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 customer is looking <clears throat> yeah. at you like, damn, this guy really. Yeah, he wants to show yeah. it off. He wants to show it off. Look yeah, how much like, effort he's putting into it's like, to him. you yeah, know, yeah. yes, and it's kind of like you just made him a movie star. His tattoo yeah. is now a movie star because yeah. you started doing all this extra stuff to focus around his work. It was like, man, That's he's doing point. this to just document this. Yeah, Imagine yeah. the tattoo is going to be super <laughs> sick, dude. I mean, like, yeah, you know, I mean. People get upset when you don't post their their tattoo Correct. on your yeah. Instagram. So if you're like, oh, yes. I'm gonna and then most of make all, a video like, for you. you make a video of it yeah. like that. You make a super cool video of the day that they got their tattoo. That's, That's like a memory yeah. that they can see. Yeah, Correct. Right you just answered your own question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you just answered your own question right I, there, I, man. Yeah. You know what's funny? I could only just imagine. That. I, I forget right? to think about like what the customers think. How about it? It's like, uh, oh, sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, you're taking pictures because I'm taking pictures of almost everything. You're taking pictures of it because it's going to go on the gram, right? And I'll be like, sometimes I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I don't have any intentions to put it on Instagram mm-hmm. because although it's a great tattoo, maybe it's just something I don't want to showcase. Straight to story. You know, yeah, I just stick to my strengths. And- <laughs> <laughs> but, well, that's what I would say. But, like, you have to make sure that you're on a daily basis, yeah. you need to post every day and that doesn't mean like you need to post like on your feed every day but you need to either a like load on your feed or create a reel or add to your story on a daily basis i know that sounds fucking crazy but you better get used to doing it i think more than once too more than once is better but at least as a minimum minimum once a day because at least on a story you get 24 hours of grabbing somebody's attention about a the what you're tattooing what you're gonna tattoo or what you want to tattoo yeah and then same thing when you create a reel it's like 
we've talked about this before. Creating a reel is catering to, I'm getting, trying to get a new customer. You know, you post on your feed for the people that already follow you and they want to see what else you're doing, you know, yeah. and those are the photos. They maybe they don't need to get a ton of, you know, action because that's just for your when people go to your page and they look they can look quickly and be like, oh, yeah, look at these tattoos. But you need to create reels to engage new people and you need to put things in your stories to continue to engage the people that are on the constant watching what you're already doing, following you, yeah. already following you and all that. <laughs> That's yeah. important. Who are we trying to look at the yesterday or the other day? <clears throat> Gabe and I were, we were trying to look at the artwork of somebody and we were looking at their Instagram. And what style of work was it? Every, every video. Like, it's a long ass the, video. The thumbnail of the video was the tattoo. Like, oh, cool. Oh. Let's check this out. And we would hit play and oh, it would start from the beginning of the video of them like getting yeah. ready to tattoo, right. like the drawing and all that. And just like some crazy. Yeah, guys, you know, just want to see the tattoo, bro? Yeah, I just want to yeah. see the tattoo. Yeah. 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 So, tattoo artist annoys the hell yeah. out of us. Yeah. Oh, as my clients, goodness. They probably love it. Well, yeah. that's, what, that's what John's saying right now is like have that, but also have just the photo in your grid sure. so that if somebody just wants to look at the tattoo, they can. I think so. Okay. I don't think it needs to be of like every tattoo you do that you need to have just the photo up, but yeah. have a good mix of like tattoos, just freaking reels and all that shit. Because like if I see the reel and I'm engaged and I'm like, oh, this reel is cool. I saw this tattoo. I want to see more of your work. I don't want to sit through like five more reels that are like a minute long to watch tat to look at the tattoos. Now I just want to go, oh, this is a photo. Look at that. Yeah. Go to another photo. Look at that. Yeah. Sweet. That's done. But, you know, if it's just reels, it's not going to work either. I, I don't know if this has always been a feature, but I just noticed it that when you post, you have the option for it to go to your grid or to your only your straight reels, to reels. Page. Yeah, yeah, it's been up for a while. I've I've been doing that, just putting it straight to my reels page. So at least my grid stays just photos. I've had it where I'll leave a reel up for like a little bit. And then if I feel like the reel is like either the frame that's on the thing, it's like too like not for the feed, then I'll move it over to this, yeah. the other one, like you're saying. Because I feel like sometimes you don't need to have every reel on your grid, but some are good, especially if you feel like, oh, these are good when people stick on, watch this one and they watch through the whole thing. I know it's been said that the aesthetic of your grid doesn't matter, but there's still something about it. Like, I'd like to see a nice, cohesive grid that where like all the photos look yeah. like they belong. And I don't give a crap. There's that guy, Lord Lips. <laughs> His is always beautiful, beautifully yeah. curated. Yeah. 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 And just, I'm like, I don't have the. He clearly doesn't have kids. <laughs> I do not have the time for that. Can I say something? <laughs> no. I don't give a crap. I just want to watch. I just want to see good tattoos. I don't care if you use the same white background or the same black background in any of your stuff. I just like if if that's yeah. the thing, though, like I'm but you're very, not the client. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, exactly. I'm very particular. Right. So I look at things from a very technical eye. And I expect also like a lot of the people that are looking for my work to want to spot that kind of technical stuff. So, yeah, no, no, I get the whole like, you know, slave yourself to social media to really get eyes on your profile and your pics. But <clears throat> I'll be quite honest, man. It's just like at the end of the day, it's really how you want to treat your page. Sometimes people just want it to be a portfolio. They'd be like, you want to see my work? <laughs> It's right here. Here's the final fo photo, but I'm not going to be dancing for you. I'm not going mean, to be I'm just, not going to be funny for you. I completely like, disagree. I feel I, like I know. You know, cuz Instagram is I not want a people portfolio to come in and find all this stuff Instagram out. Instagram is a social media platform. It is not a web page. If you want a web page of just your portfolio, have a link on your page where it's like a link to your web page where you have like your showcase of work, like a portfolio. Instagram is a social media platform. The more that but you it's use it, based. it's I think, mainly I think it based. no, it's not. That's wrong. It it was. It began as that, but it no longer is. I think you're both right because I, I think it still is a portfolio because most definitely is. When my clients want to see my portfolio, they want they don't want to go to my Instagram and then click on another link. They just want to see it all yeah. everywhere. Like it's all in one place. Well, that's what I mean. Where but, like, you know, on you your still Instagram, have to make it, if you're you trying should, to get new clients, you exactly. Gotta that's what work. I mean. Like when, yeah. uh, if you are only posting on your Instagram page, like it's like in putting new photos in your hard paper portfolio, where you're just like, oh, I'm sliding a new photo in here. Your Instagram page is going to be fucking dead. Yeah. And you're not going to get new people 
at the rate that you could be getting new people. You're going to have the slowest moving business that you could have and you're not going to have exposure to your page. Yeah, sometimes new people is old people. Like I've been posting designs that I just want to do lately and getting clients that I've already tattooed being like, hey, yeah, like how I much see. for that one? Exactly. And then turns into an appointment that I filled like a couple cancellations with. Yeah. So mm-hmm. That's what I think is important like, to, yeah, to clients, mix things. Yeah. Clients yeah, yeah, yeah. that follow me because they've been tattooed by somebody else at the shop have gotten tattoos that way too. So yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Because yeah. I mean, yep. you need to have, and you need to have photos to show your work, but you consistent. need to have like... Uh, like just because you have fish, you shouldn't doesn't mean you should stop fishing. You know, you still gotta yeah. go and get more fish. Yeah. And that's just oh, of course, <laughs> consistently. <laughs> New posting clients are awesome. Right? And the stories, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you listened to the social media marketing podcast this morning, right? Yeah. So I think it was today's episode. They were talking about it doesn't. It's not necessarily a better thing to have a wider audience if it's people who aren't into your product. Correct. Right? 100%, and yeah. their, their, their thing was like, it's better to have smaller people who are more into what you do and more likely to buy your product. Correct. Right, right, right. right. It makes yes. sense. But as I was listening to that, I was thinking like, if you have a wider audience that might not buy your product, those people know people who might want to buy your product. Yeah. So Absolutely. That's why I don't, I don't necessarily 100% <clears throat> agree with that. Well, I think that the way that it, the way that, that I think works, it's a matter of like, let's say you make a reel doing like a fucking, uh, one of these little viral dances or whatever. You know what I'm saying? On your tattoo page and it goes viral because you're a tattooed girl <laughs> and you're doing like, you know, now you have a bunch of people that are following you because of that kind of content, not because your product is selling tattoos for them to buy it, you know? So now if you're only posting mainly tattoo work, then those people are not as interested. They just aren't. Now your page shows less engagement because you have more followers that are not interested in your product and it's going to hurt your numbers overall. Like it's just going to tank, you know? So even if you have a whole, you know, you got a million followers, if those million followers are there because you do really fun TikTok dances and not necessarily tattoos, then that's not going to translate into money. That's why I think that he was breaking it down like yeah. that. I mean, yeah. I get it. I, I get what that what you're saying. I think you still want to expand your audience, but to a specific audience. So like, it doesn't matter if I have a hundred thousand followers. If yeah, if only like you know five percent of those people. Yeah, if like yeah, one percent of those people are, are actual potential clients. Right. Then it doesn't matter if I have five thousand, but like. Eighty percent of those people are potential clients. Right. And I would never get. T- yeah. I would you never get I mean? a tattoo by that guy, but he makes funny videos. Yeah. I mean, like, so you even just, like I never get know? tattooed by that guy, but his tattoos are awesome, and yeah. I follow him because his tattoo videos are cool. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of guys that are in that field right now. A lot of dudes that are just like, and they're as slow as someone with, you know. 500 well, followers. I was going to say somebody that has like a shit ton of followers and people follow them because they do funny videos and then people want to get tattooed by them. That guy's really funny, man. I just, he seems like a cool guy. I want to yeah, get tattooed can, by that guy. Yeah. You it know, can translate that. I don't, I think that happens less than we think it does. Yeah. I think it happens way less than I what still we think, think it word is. of mouth is the best. It, it's always going to be the best. It has been the best. Day. I think like our followers that get tattooed by us, put other people onto our Instagram that want and, to get tattooed and it also depends on the type of, like let's not like get rid of like a lot of different variables like of like of how you of like clout how you got the clout you know what kind of audience like that clout got you yeah so a lot of that stuff really helps so i'm not yeah. disagreeing with you guys because i 100 percent agree <laughs> but just playing devil's advocate yeah. don't you think that when somebody sees your video shares it with their friend don't you think that is essentially word of mouth just a digital form of it i yes. think people share a little bit less than what we th- what we think you can see you can see the exact numbers of of how many people shared your tattoo yeah yeah, yeah but that's i think that's more than the people just walking around talking yeah, about I it. I 100 percent agree. Yeah. It's like you know, my clients don't share my stuff enough. So if you're watching this, please. <laughs> share my stuff more. That's exactly why I'm but making my statement. I think 100 percent, man. Like you know, you can you know go and be a door to door salesman, or you can learn yeah. to use the internet and hit like a hundred thousand houses in one day. Yeah, 
I think you are right. Like, I think we're both, we're all right. Just, yeah. We're just more right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you I know, know is I, guess, I suck at Instagram. Yeah. But no, no. I'm consistently busy, but I'm also pretty consistent on Instagram, even though I suck at it. Or is there well, no other people that like. What does is, what is sucking at Instagram mean? I just. I not knowing how to play I the algorithm. Yeah, I don't know how to play the algorithm. I don't pay attention to what That's, I'm supposed to or not supposed to do. I just try to post a few stories every day. I post tattoos and then I post, I repost funny stuff that I think is funny. Yeah. And every once in a while, I try to put my face on there and say something because I heard that was important at one point. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's my gripe That's about tough. that entire thing. It's just that. <laughs> but I don't uh, know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so I'm a, lot of, a lot of people might hear like how I talk about like social media and algorithms and think that I absolutely hate it. It's a great tool. But what I have a problem with now is how the algorithm is catered pretty much against like uh, anybody who uh, who doesn't really like, and, and this is being real, devote a shit ton amount of time into, you know, making you a pattern play, play to be the noticed, game. play the game. Yeah. And that's my problem because it doesn't necessarily, I'll be honest with you guys, the algorithm does not really let the people decide. Yeah. It's just trying to cater, oh, which type of people would want to look at this content as opposed to, so the new people that you're getting, it's not, it's not at your own liberty. It's not like, that's why like, um, obviously we'll, we'll never be able to go back to this, but the old Instagram was awesome because when something took off, whether, you know, when it wasn't controlled by, by an algorithm, it was like, if your photo or video of what you made got popular, it's because it was good. And people were constantly like looking at it. There was eyes on it. But now it's just all about, we're going to use these top 10 songs because the algorithm is going to notice that these are the frequently used ones. We're going to do this pattern of the video. Uh, this is like a chain type of video that's going along. We're going to follow the same pattern. So you start to play the game. Yeah. And that's my problem with Instagram. It's I mean, just the reason it why it doesn't let people be authentic. The you reason know what I'm saying? Works so much. Using Kendrick and Drake. Yeah, you have to, you, yeah, you <laughs> have to really time. present yourself in a exaggerated and fake manner to have that. Like, obviously there's going to be a lot of people that are going to disagree. They're like, no, show your authentic self. Like that's really what, no, everyone's really trying to fit the criteria. What's going to get them noticed. And that's my only problem with the algorithm is it's, it's you're really at the mercy of that and not like I'm going to simplify the algorithm for you right now. This is the simplest thing about the algorithm. Be entertaining. Yeah. And be entertaining. However, that may be to your specific audience. Because that's why there's no like yeah. there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just like be entertaining because number one. You have to grab attention. So your videos and pictures need to be able to grab attention right away. And then two, retain the attention. Most people either A, are really good at making something that grabs their attention, but then can deliver on the f initial grab. Yeah. You know, like you did a really good hook, but then what came after didn't get interest me. So they keep moving. It didn't fulfill that promise. It didn't yeah. fulfill that promise. And that's <laughs> almost everyone's problem or a lot of people fail because maybe they have great content, but they don't know how to grab attention. To me, that's the equivalent of like a tattooer that does amazing tattoos, but can't create a good video that grabs attention. It doesn't matter how good that tattoo is. When Most the hell, people will when the not hell has watch that, that ever been important <laughs> to tattoo them everywhere. But like, I, oh, yeah. I'm going to do good You're tattoos, but I got to be a freaking, I got to be the best dancer on Instagram. Yeah. It makes zero well, you, sense. It's, I mean, right. it's, uh, it's not just tattooing. No. It's like what I said before. It's, yeah. every, it's, not industry just, right it's now. every industry because yeah. it's the most competitive that it's ever been. And, you know, it just happened to be that the world moved in this direction. Where yeah, but I'm not competing against good tattoo artists. I'm competing against people that know how to, like, create a witty little video or like. A, and, yeah. and, and here's the thing. I'm not sour or like bitter about it. I just think it's cheap Yeah. where it's like, you're not, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Like it's all bullshit. Obviously a you're thousand amazing percent tattoo artist. Bullshit. Like I feel like just like in a, what is it? The Zoolander the movie. Mugatu. <laughs> Mugatu is like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. But it's, 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 a, it's, I one, I don't think it's cheap because people that are really good at making content are really good at making content. 
No, that's that's not what I was gonna say. I know, but what I'm but saying it, is that what are the, if they're not just make they're making good they're really good at making content. Yeah, but like, but this but not that mean that you're still tattoo. talking it, right. you're still talking in just tattoo terms. Well, and what, I'm this telling is, you, this in, is the honest tattoo or podcast. I know, but you're still <laughs> just you're not letting me finish anything that I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is, if you want to win the social media game to be able to promote yourself, no matter what business you do. Whether you're a tattooer, whether you're a barber, whether whatever it is that you do, yeah, you just need to learn to sell your work online. Other than doing it, like it's great if you can do it, you know, face to face. That's great. You're probably going to continue to work and do well. But if you want to do better than most, you have to learn how to use what everybody uses to find their whatever everything yeah. that they do nowadays if i'm gonna find if i'm gonna go to a restaurant i'm gonna click i'm gonna read the reviews i might watch a couple of videos about it if you know how many times i've been to a restaurant just because i watched a great video that somebody made of that restaurant and they were like amazing to fucking experience like right. I, I went here the food was incredible i had these drinks and i'm like damn i should go check out that fucking restaurant that just sounds great you Sounds know? like we need our clients to make videos for us instead of us trying. I'm to telling you, man, that's what I, I did. I, I, I really did. Hey, you're on to something. I've actually done that yeah. too. <laughs> Gabe, I'm going to read a quote for you that I posted uh, a couple of weeks ago. You go for it by uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I feel like oh, this. Gary oh, Vee. Gary V. Oh, Gary right? snap! Yeah, my buddy. He's got all the answers. Don't have any fun in life. Save all your money. Yeah, I know that guy. This applies we directly to you, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this applies directly to Gabe. Butter and toast. Bullshit Stop eating. Entrepreneurs cry about the way they want it to be instead of reacting to the way it actually is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, I get it. Okay. We wish it was like yeah. the old Instagram. Yeah. We wish it was not like this, but this is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. And yeah, I, I think mind. you're 100 percent right. Um, but to Gabe's point, I think that some tattoo artists, like, and and I even work with some that are this way they're not outgoing they don't have that personality where and they didn't sign up to be like a social media guru they're like i don't like entertaining people i don't want to entertain people i just want to do amazing tattoos yeah. and that's what they do i and get their tattoos it. are awesome i get it and so it's frustrating for those people to be like I'm never going to be that person yeah. that's like outgoing and can make funny, quirky videos because like that's just not my personality. So I'll no. tell you this, So I'm right? being forced into this thing that I don't... Do, know, do like, industries change? But this you're is not that, wrong in the fact well, that... Well, this is this what I'm saying. Like, if industries you, change. If you so want that, you if we go back, it. If we go back to the 70s... We don't want your skill. If we go <laughs> back to the 70s or 80s, right? 70s or 80s, and you go back into the graphic design field... Right. Everybody around that time that was doing graphic design was doing everything by hand. Everything was taught like fonts, everything or everything was being done by hand. Then computers came out. Computers became mainstream. All of the design work became fucking done with a computer. At that point, designers had two options. Either you learn to use a computer so you can create this job faster and beat the other guys that are trying to do the same job that you're doing yeah. or a you can continue to do it how you want now i bet you some would be like yeah that guy does great work we're going to continue to use that guy but over time that became smaller and smaller and smaller until the majority adopted the new technology and used what they had to use to be able to maintain competitiveness in their market and that's what I'm saying. You can continue to hold on to how things were as much as you want, but the ball keeps moving whether we want it or not because we don't set it. The market sets what it wants. Yeah. You know? I think the difference though is that that's in the marketing, whereas with graphic designers, it was the application of what they were actually doing, not just the marketing. Like it was mm -hmm. a, a person could still be a, an amazing tattoo artist. But they're going to be somebody who sucks at tattooing, but can make great videos. And that person's going to be busier because they're making these amazing videos that are getting people to be like, I want to get tattooed by this person. It seems like a lot of fun. Perfect well, example yeah. of that yeah. is what? But their tattoos are shit. But they'll be busier. i <laughs> They'll be busier not because of their tattoos, but because they're connecting with more people. That's what, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That doesn't make it wrong. 
So we were. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm no. saying it just makes it different. It it's just, just it's kind it, of just it's like it's not wrong, but it's not right. You know, yeah. if you're if you're a great you could you could be a great singer. You could be a great singer, but if you're not willing to go and sing in front of people, you can just be a great singer in your house. Nobody's gonna ever gonna see you. Nobody's ever gonna say like, "Hey, we should put you in a bigger stage and get you, you know, more yeah. a better record deal, etc." Like you're gonna just stay stagnant. That's the problem. Yeah. And I feel like that's if you're a tattooer and you're trying to reach out to more people, and you're like, "Man, every yeah, day." But a tattooer is a tattooer, and a singer is most definitely an entertainer. So you want to be sellable as a singer, as a tattooer. Of course, we are people you're at an, the end of the day. Well, people but, say they're artists. artists. I'm not, if you're a tattooer, you're an my, artist. I'm not selling my personality, although that is a plus and a perk to what I can do. I'm selling my artwork, you know. So it's 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 different. It's different when you're when you're on a platform like when you're trying to. Because I feel like right now, I get what every, every right now Instagram is. You're right. If we really like, if we really want to talk about the truth of what Instagram is now, it's not really to sell your product; it's to sell yourself. It's for you to be a brand. Yeah, you're not, a brand, not for your 100%, stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what a lot of people are having. That's a even lot of hurting problem. bigger, like uh, bigger businesses. You know, like <clears throat> that's why bigger brands and even like, uh, for example, if you have a business, you're more likely to succeed if you show how you run your business and then just be like, this is what we do, you know? And then when you see the smaller version of that is like as a tattooer, we were talking like the process is more important than the end product. People yeah. get more, they fall in love the way that you do things than more than what yeah. the final outcome was. I mean, you're seeing, I heard this, but there is a, there is some studies showing that large accounts, like, like big corporations, like let's say like Lowe's, right? If you follow Lowe's, you might see some Lowe's related things, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, the the engagement might not be that great. What is going to do a lot better for Lowe's as a company is the CEO of Lowe's to have an Instagram account and like him being on there and showing his face and talking about what's going on. Like that gets more people following and engaging and wanting to buy from Lowe's than just like the Lowe's faceless brand. Correct. Even, yeah, even like when it's like that big corporation, like. Taco Bell or whatever, when they make their like actual corporate account a little more personal, like where somebody comments something and then they reply like mm -hmm. as if they're like a normal human talking back, and then it goes viral because people are like, "This is hilarious." Taco Bell is Bell's hilarious. talking yeah. shit yeah. about yeah. this customer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's huge on Twitter, yeah. you know, or X, you know, like it's Those it's huge. Go viral, yeah. Yes, when like a brand responds to a tweet, it's yeah. just like yes, you were like, yeah, like shit, this is great. You like know? Chipotle is like uh, they're spicy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Chipotle is spicy with their yeah. you know their fucking ex tweets, yeah. you know. And even in sports, like there's athletes that they might not be the best like player, but they're a good player, but they're better on social media, so they're getting the endorsements because because they have a, more people attention are yeah. watching them because they're like this guy's hilarious or this guy's nice or this guy whatever he's, it is that he can he can he can sell himself he can right? influence yeah he's selling yeah. himself he can influence yeah, we show the whole process and i think it's it's so audience. relevant in our industry and i think that uh too many people just aren't putting in the work that it that you got to put in the work you got to yeah. do it like I, yeah if again you're i think those, you're right but yeah. yeah i understand the people that are like it's not fair because i don't want to do that well, but too you're fucking not, bad. You're not <laughs> well, too fucking bad, dude. But at the same time, some of those people still stay busy, right? Because yeah. they well, have yeah. the time base. And they and, will, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I feel like some will. And not, maybe not as busy as they could be. Not as busy as they could be. And, that's, and, and, that and sucks. that's fine. That sucks, you know? Because I think, like, absolutely, you know, if we go back to the way things were, like, yes, the people that are talented, that are, you know, really good, but that's just not reality. Yeah. You know, it's just not the way I mean, that it yeah. works. It sucks for them. It kind of sucks for clients too. Cause like, yeah. yeah, you got tattooed by this like Instagram famous person. You got a mediocre tattoo. Yeah. But this guy over here that nobody knows about, you could have got an awesome tattoo from. <laughs> so if so. you're that guy that. So do your research. Yeah. Do your research. <laughs> if you're that guy that's, uh, that's doing incredible tattoos and you don't want to dance in front of the freaking camera to some sort of algorithm. I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Enjoy your life. Live your life. Don't freaking stress. Keep crushing it. People are always going to come to you. People will find you if you're good. 
But mm-hmm. like if, if if Instagram is not your thing, I mean, you know, the reason why I talk about it like this is because there are a lot of people like social media is really and and not everybody's going to be like and I'm not trying to like fluff my own stuff, but I'm very resilient mentally. So there's a lot of people out there that social media means everything to them, like getting approval, getting likes, uh, having their videos seen like they really ride everything on that stuff. And all I want to tell you is that it's at the end of the day, it's not real life and just grind, work hard. Sure, it can be used as a tool for social media, but like mental health is like a serious thing and social media weighs heavily on a lot of people so don't beat yourself up. i agree i agree yeah. some don't, people take it too hard don't beat like, yourself you know, up. Yeah. they'll do an amazing tattoo and if people don't like it online because the algorithm says yeah, like, like, oh, like then and they feel like not. their tattoo is shit and yeah, it's yeah. not and that's absolutely right that's that shouldn't be a measure of uh of how good you're doing you know if people are liking or seeing out your work it's a measure of how entertaining you are yeah you know and how much you know Correct. You know how to be good at social media. You know, you could do an amazing tattoo and just do a shitty reel up for it and then nobody's going to see it. Oh, yeah. So that video <laughs> we watched at the beginning, I wonder how good that guy was at social. Maybe he was amazing at social media. I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt it. Yeah. I mean, like, it's one of those things I mean, she where, said like, she you know. she did research. Maybe it was, like, a YouTube video she saw. She, she, she definitely guy, did her shit by to this the shop, you know. Yeah. But I think, like, uh, doing... Uh, <laughs> Somebody that can put in the effort to get good at tattooing, if they channeled any amount of that energy to get good at social media, they would also do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I'm not good at it, it, but I just keep plugging away. You know, and I think it, as long as you try, as you're going to do try. better. As long as you try, you'll get better in like anything. You know, if you do it more often, you'll get better at it faster. If yeah. you fight it and you're like, I don't want to get good at this because I don't really care for it. You're not probably going to get good at it. Yeah. It's a matter of like doing it with diligence. And you don't need to get that much like what we were saying, you know, like you don't need a huge audience to, you know, have yeah. a good amount of clientele and be yeah, yeah, yeah. and be doing well you just can't ignore it i think yeah. especially in this day and age like you can't just completely be like you know what i'm just not going to do this at all but i think matt what you were i think you were onto something when you were talking about how you got your client to take a video i think like using other people's instagram their perspective for our benefit i think that's mm-hmm. something that like I haven't done enough or haven't thought enough about. And I think that's like, cause even like coming on this podcast or doing guest spots and stuff, it, it puts eyes on me that otherwise wouldn't. And so when I go do a guest spot, I try to go visit other shops and make every advantage that I can, or opportunity that I can make out of that guest spot, yeah. spot I try to take advantage of. And I think social media is the same. So like if we can get our client to be like, hey, take a video of me tattooing you, it's going to get everybody that follows them now to watch us and then be like, oh, I, this is cool. Maybe I'll, I'll follow this guy. I'll take that one step further and give everybody else a little uh, something to do. Not only have your client film while you're tattooing them, when they go home, hey, film taking this bandage off. Do a reveal. Like, wash your tattoo. Show it off in the mirror. Like, that's all user generated content that could be added into your grid and mm-hmm. into your reels that now you have extra yeah. content to throw on there. You gotta so, remind them to tag you though. Well, even, yeah, <laughs> they don't have to post it. They, they just have to send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 True. Yeah. That's actually pretty clever. You know, and it's yeah, like, that's a good idea. All of that is part of so the story. At the shop, at my shop, post stuff and they don't tag the shop. I'm like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> tag the shop. <laughs> I know, it's like, we're a team here, guys. Like, this is, this is what's happening in the house. Or send me the video right after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think I like, there's things though, like, so uh, for example, bad leadership, on you know, me. like, if, if you only work, uh, and uh, man, if you only get your, your client, like through just email and all that stuff, that's going to be harder to do. You know, if you only like have that discord or whatever, which also adds to the whole experience of getting tattooed, which I think it's super important. And most people fail at, you know, they they start the whole experience of getting tattooed as such a transaction. So it ends up being transactional. Yeah. Like all the guys that have no DMs on their profile. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get clients to email me just so I can keep it organized. But like. I don't put no DMs because I'm like, yeah, DM me because 
It's easy. I, I wonder what it. those you're, people you're do. You're looking at my thing, send me a DM, and then I'll be like, awesome, yeah, I'd be ha- yeah. happy to tattoo me. If you could send it to an email just so I can put it in a folder so it's organized. And if you're listening and there, you have no DMs in your bio, what do you what do? You do? What, when, when people send you a DM, do you just ignore it? Yeah. Do you read it and just let, leave it on read? Like, what, what, is the, what, is, what do you do? <laughs> I would say yeah. that they, they either, like a, a have, like, an auto-response message when they get Maybe, a DM yeah. that says like, Hey, sorry, if you're looking to get a tattoo, like feel free to, you know, email me through this blah or go to this link to I fill out a consent. I feel like know. that's missing an opportunity though, just to add a little personal touch. Like, yeah, I don't have an auto reply on my DM. I do on my emails. Well, that goes back but to what you were saying. DMs, you know, some like, people are like, like hey. very introverted and they don't want to talk to people. They don't want to talk to me. They're like, oh, but I even just- if it's just say, hey, thanks for shooting me a DM. If you could send an email, that'd be great. Yeah. Easy, easy. That's a lot more yeah. personal than just being like, no DMs, don't talk to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So check this out. Yeah. I, I'm too I, cool. I used to be that. And I still have the no DMs on my, so to put myself on blast, I have oh, no DMs shit. on that. But, big but, lately, people have been like still reaching out through DMs and I've been answering them. And it's, to be quite honest, so quick and effective that I'm going to remove no DMs <laughs> yeah. from the thing. Yeah. And I'm just going to be like, yeah, just shoot me a DM. Yeah. Bravo, and I'm going to be Bravo. like, you know what? Just shoot me a DM. I'm down for I'm, A little back and forth doesn't hurt. Because the thing is that I thought, here's here was my thing, that I thought like clients were going to be super back and forth with that. And, mm-hmm. and, and it all depends on the individual and how you sell yourself and your tattoos. And I guess like even through text, sometimes your confidence will go through and be like, I got this. Like, no yeah. worries. What do you need to what do? You, what are we doing? All right, cool. Let's just, you know, uh, and I'll say through the M's, like send me a deposit through this, that and, and we're golden. Yeah. And make it short and sweet. And then any other complications or any other little like other modifications day of let's not worry about it let's just book the appointment i found the easiest way to get rid of the back and forth thing is um, among the uh, uh, during like the first interaction yeah whether they ask the questions or not you answer them yeah yeah because you've done this a million times before you know exactly what they're going to ask you just just lay it all out have it saved so you can just just copy paste yeah Yeah. Yeah. exactly all out there (laughs) this is my process this is how i work this is what your first day is like to getting tattooed by me this is how i'm going to charge you like yeah that's my auto reply on my email that's why i'm like like, shoot me an email it's going to answer a lot of your questions and then i have it organized but when i do guest spots like just shoot me a dm is what i'd say because the, it's just the next step to that that i think it's important is to make sure that you personalize it like yeah. i feel like even if you have something that's pre-written and it's like a boom boom and send like where everything's there like just go to the next step just personalize it a little bit so it feels like it's a real you telling them that yeah. whole spiel that you've told a million people yeah because i think it's so important to have people feel that I'm, pay, I'm giving you my attention and uh, it's it's when people give you attention it's like that's gold it's mm-hmm. people fight for it you know yeah. so mm-hmm. when you give that to your client from the go you give them your attention you make yourself feel like they're seen like they're you're present with them they're like oh man I'm gonna have a great experience with this guy yeah. Yeah, from the 100%, beginning 100% you know if they feel that from the go that's gonna translate like oh man this person really gave me their fucking time yeah yeah and then you that you started giving them the value of working with you mm-hmm. other than just like i was completely impersonal all it was like that's why i've seen i've seen it happen with many tattooers where they build their clientele through doing that doing they do their own emails and they're talking to someone back and forth mm-hmm. and then the moment that they switch from that their clientele starts going down because somebody else is doing it, you know? And they, and in their mind, they're like, oh, but this is so much more professional. I have somebody answering for me. And I was like, guess what? It's but how, yeah. You know, how but like, you? do they care as much as you care if about you're getting get that client to do in it, there? Get that person to see how you've been doing it and be like, do it like this. Yeah. And like how you were saying, like, it's so much easy, it's easy just to respond to like DMs and stuff. Like, you can see their name, like, yeah. if they ever reply with their name, like, just be like, hey, John. Like just yeah, adding direct. their their name that yeah. you've recognized. Something simple. Hey, I paid attention. Oh, and exactly. I know your name now. Yeah. That makes it that much. And then you can copy and paste whatever other information you want to add. But just the fact that you've added their name makes it personal. And that's one yeah thing. I forgot where I read that. Where it's so simple. It was like when you're when you're first meeting somebody or you're 
trying to even do like a like a business transaction or anything just a simple interaction you give a lot of value to the other person just by acknowledging and repeating their name you're looking at yeah back it's like at, if someone came in the shop them. such a simple thing but it made it, it, it ripped the ripple effect as well. yeah. yeah it's like if someone came in the shop like and we all just sat here they're gonna be like what the fuck yeah, yeah, like, yeah. turn around and be like hey how's hey, it how going? you doing yeah be right with you acknowledge someone's presence yeah. it's that right, little yeah. thing that's like oh okay yeah. I just have to hang out and be awkward for a minute and then they're going to get to me. <laughs> yeah. I gave this expl explanation to my, my girlfriend was asking me about like the front desk job at a shop. And I said this to her, I was like the job at the front desk at a shop should be almost the same as somebody that's hosting a party. Yeah. You Correct. know, when people show up to your party, yeah. you greet them immediately. I'm so yeah. glad you came. Yeah. Can I take your coat? Like, what do you need? I want you to have, like, make them feel like, I'm so glad you came and I want you to have a great time at yeah. this party. Put on a blue vest and be that Walmart yeah. greeter. <laughs> That's it. It always helps to, like, make you feel pumped and excited yes. about, like, yes, we got here. Like, you see, yes. I told you guys. Yes. Like, these guys. If the tattooer's not ready. It is your job to keep that person engaged and freaking alert and it has still having a good time until that tattooer gets to that person's like Heck yeah. and and starts going, Hey, what's up, man? I'm got you know, if I'm mm -hmm. still working on a tattoo, like you can't that exci that excitement that comes through yeah. the door needs to stay high until they're getting tattooed and they're like, Oh, this sucks. And then as soon as like they're mm -hmm. finished excitement goes right back up like oh yeah. my god this yeah. looks amazing i'm stoked yeah. show it to my friend over here yeah. oh that looks sick dude oh man that's like pff, 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 that yeah. pump you know hype man not a front counter yeah <laughs> yeah that's, that's, right. is what that's, that's what the front yeah. counter needs to be yeah. you, know you know what's you know what's crazy throughout the like, years i mean i've been tattooing 17 years john you've been tattooing 17 17 as well triano's got same thing same thing um, how, how many years have you been tattooing it? 13. 13? Yeah. Uh, that's, I'm going to be honest with you, long enough to have seen a counter person or two. <laughs> and what I will say is that I have had, well, fewer than more. But I've had the pleasure of seeing some really special people at the front that are just able to, like, it doesn't matter if you're in the back drawing as an artist the like the front counter person hyping up the person be like oh you're gonna get tattooed by john Sick. Oh, oh bro yeah. you sh i took a peek at what he was designing you're gonna freaking lose your mind like really amped about like for the person yeah knowing that they're gonna get tattooed by an individual or something and that's that's happened to me before uh where i've i've been through shops like that where where I, I would I would always be like, damn, dude, you fucking like, excuse my language, you really freaking like sold that one for me. And he's like, they're hyped and ready, ready to go. Like, and then yeah. as soon as they sit down, they're just like, they already already started having a good experience just walking into the shop, being greeted yeah. by. And it's such an important thing because I've been I've been to shops before where the artists I booked with are amazing, super talented, but the front desk person's like, I. All right, who are you getting tattooed yeah, it's by? Kind of a bummer. All right, yeah, just sit right there and wait. All right, he'll be with you like another thirty minutes, and I'm just like, all right, All right cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but me, me coming as like a tattoo collect, I, I don't mind it, but I can see the regular tattoo comes customer being a little underwhelmed, like, yeah, you know, I don't know. It also makes a huge it's, difference too, like when the tattoo's done and the counter person comes in, like, yeah. oh, that's sick. And they're like, like oh, that yeah. came out I love insane. that. Like, or like, that's like so see, cute. I told yeah, you. That's, like, so, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that goes all for <laughs> all the artists in the shop too. Because yeah. if, if you're an artist and you're showing all your buddies, like, as another oh, artist yeah, in the yeah. shop, like, I think it's your responsibility to kind of hype it up, like, oh, yeah, you fucking yeah, nailed it. That, that looks sick. So dude. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Yeah. And I I got a shop manager that's there some days a week um so share it to sonia um but yeah I, everybody that comes in the door she's like can i get you a drink of water like shout out sonia yeah 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 and it's yeah it's awesome just yeah. that little like can i get yeah, you some, I care. Can, can i get you some can water I, can i get you something like, are, you are, you okay? yeah, are you comfortable yeah you okay? the experience yeah. of getting tattooed you is 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 yeah. it's some you can't match it to anything else it's you know i heard gabe telling that somebody's like hey like eat doesn't matter like even if you put the thing to your arm and it Nothing's going to be the same as when you look at it and it's there yeah. and you're like, it is permanent now and yeah. it's there. That's going to be like, whoa, yeah. I'm going to die with this shit. Yeah, it's, <laughs> on, it's on me. It's on it's me. It's actually on yeah. me. Like that's, it's a di different vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you can tell, yeah, shops that are like that, like 
even coming in here today, I wasn't working here today, but I came in a little bit early to do the podcast and everybody that was standing around greeted me and asked me my name and what I was doing mm-hmm. here. And it felt nice, right? Like cool. when I did guest spots at King's Ad, the first thing I noticed when I came in there was like how nice everybody was to me. So like, awesome. as an artist that's guesting, like I'm like, if they're treating me like this, like I that's know great. they're going to treat my clients the people. like this. Yeah. this exactly. And that's why I'm booked every time I go to King's Ave and some other shops that I've guested at. That's great. I'm not booked because I'm like. All those things make a difference, man. They really the counter do. staff's not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're just sitting there. And, yeah. Hey. yeah. It's, it's an easy job you for, an for someone like, to the, not make yeah. the most out of it. You that's know? right. Yeah. That's that's, like, that's When you so walk true. in and like the first thing they say is, do you have an appointment? I'm like, what the fuck? How about a hi? Yeah. Like, Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and then, do you have an appointment? How right. can I help you? Right. I was just like, do you have an appointment? It's yeah. almost like, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are guesting with us? Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me check the calendar. What is your name again? Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, you're in here. Yeah, just make people feel welcome. You so-and-so station. Yeah, he's gone for like four days. And going back <laughs> to your point, John, on social media, we need to make people feel welcome. Yeah, you need that's it true. From the rip. Got to entertain them. That's that you do. A little bit, you know, but that can be so that's so broad. Dude. You can entertain people. You know, you can have a scary movie. You can have an action film, whatever, man. It's just whatever you want to sell, man. You would sell, sell, you know, you want to have an introverted fucking sci-fi film that's super quiet. Do that, dude. Yeah. Play anime. Whatever. You guys want to see my cat? That yeah. being said, I want to. So there are just some people that I just can't stand in like interacting with. <laughs> yeah. oh, hold on, Matt, 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 Matt. <laughs> And there's one guy. Are we going to roast people from comments? No, we'll, do oh. it. we'll save that for another episode. We're, we're done with this one. So there's one guy DMs me the other day and I was in a good mood and he just, he writes, hey. And normally when someone just writes, hey, that's, and that's annoying. It, it annoys the shit out yeah. of me and I just leave yep. it, right? But I, I entertain it. I was like, hey, what's up? And then I was expecting him to go into like whatever he wants. And then he responds, what's up, guy? <laughs> yeah. no, no, not oh. what, what's up brody that's what he said what's, what's up, up brody? brody brody and that, that was it I, I was like you're done that was the end of the conversation <laughs> I, not, I didn't even open it i was like i saw the the i'm gonna message you, you every day <laughs> what's up, brody? Uh, yeah you left on red you know and that's the risk you take for writing uh yeah. for not writing no dms on your yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had a guy this week that like messaged hey i want to get tattoo and then i didn't respond because it was like six o'clock at night and i'm in a different country right now and this is someone from that i've tattooed before at my shop and then like the next morning it was like hey question marks <laughs> like i'm like it's been a day man yeah like, <laughs> so I, man that, that's happened to me too and i've had people that you didn't afterwards even see what you i was wanted. like hey dude i was like that was just yesterday you know like and they're yeah. like oh my god dude i'm sorry Compl- i didn't realize yeah. that was just yesterday i thought that like three days have gone by i'm like yeah. but i'll you're wait really for you to excited. tell me like some more information you're just like yeah. i want to get tattooed yeah, but my but yeah. my tattoo epiphany yeah. is still fresh yeah. i need you know i hate yeah. that and i also hate like hey and i'm like hey can i ask a question that was your question right there. <laughs> <laughs> can't yeah, ask a that's question. Great. Like that's the question right oh, there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. game over. Uh, let's, <laughs> wrap, let's wrap it up. <laughs> oh fuck. Um no, I don't have anything else. All right. Me neither. Yeah, we're at hour and twenty three. That's a long one. It's that's a long it? one. Yeah, hour and twenty three minutes. Okay. Well, I know you just got here, Gabe. You yeah. missed it the first forty minutes. I know I, I missed it. No, 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 no. I missed I missed thirty minutes, which sucks. That's true, that's true. Yeah. Um. So, all right. Before we wrap it up, let's uh, thank our Patreon supporters. We got a couple of new people that jumped on. I'm trying to find them right now. Uh, okay. So this week, we are introducing Connor Emmons, Indifferent Sif, and oh, there's one more. How do I N D I F F E R E N T Capital S I F. Dang. In, in, in different different Sif. Sif. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And Light Hand Luke. 
Light hello. Light hello. Light hello. That's the best name so far. Dude, right? you know what? Light oh, yeah, hello. I can talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. You sound like Shout like, out to you guys. Marketing. Yeah, you sound yeah. like you have a quick draw. Like if, if, if we were facing off at like noon, light hand Luke with the quick draw. Like, it'd be like, oh, you're facing <laughs> light hand Luke. If There's you guys no want way to be you're like light hand Luke, yeah. <laughs> jump onto. Honest Tattoo or the, uh, what are we doing? Patreon. Patreon. Patreon.com yeah. slash Honest Tattoo or you can sign up to be a Patreon supporter. <laughs> There's four tiers. All of them get the after show. Today, we're going to talk about barbershops and tattoo shops coexisting. Okay. Oh, All right. All right. Cool. If sure. you want to get that after show, just jump on to the Patreon, sign up to be a Patreon supporter and you'll be able to hear that. Thank you guys so much for Thank joining you. us again and we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>